Hello everyone and welcome to Mountain Lake Journal. I'm Tom Halleck. This week we're here on the historic oval of the former Plattsburgh Air Force Base, where in just a few short weeks we're going to welcome one of America's most celebrated chefs, Jacques Pepin, here to this oval for a special gala in his honor. This past week we had the pleasure of meeting Jacques at his home in Connecticut, where we talked about his life, his career, the amazing work his foundation is doing, Oh, and yes, his 40 plus years of being a pioneer on public television. Jacques Pepin welcomed us to his kitchen and introduced us to his miniature poodle, Gaston, who was quite excited to have guests. Jacques was a gracious host. We sat down to talk at length about his career. He started at a young age, first in the kitchens of his mother's restaurants at home in France, and as an apprentice and young chef working at restaurants in Paris, then cooking for prime ministers and dignitaries, before moving to America where, early on, he met a chef who would become a close friend for life, Julia Child. We are here with Master Chef Jacques Pepin. It is such a pleasure to meet you. Thank you for welcoming us into your Thank home. you. Okay, well, you're welcome. We are so looking forward to you joining us for our gala on October 1st and really giving our viewers an opportunity to, to meet you. So many people know you from your cooking shows uh, and, and, and from PBS, uh, that really. That's really PBS, yes, more than it. I mean, I'm a big PBS man and I've been on PBS 40 years, something like this, you know. So uh, the first series I did was in 1982 you know, in Jacksonville, Florida, and eventually most of the series I did with KQED in San Francisco, and we shot here as well. So, uh, yes, I'm a big PBS man, me and Julia, of course. <laughs> of course. I was with Julia lived in Boston, and I teach at Boston University actually for 45 years, you know, so a long, long time. So we used to teach together, actually, so uh, we had a great time. I met Julia in 1960. So uh, I knew her a long, long time. You know, not long after, I had a friend of mine, Helen McCauley, was the food editor of McCord, how beautiful. She became kind of my surrogate mother in New York, way before I was married. And she said, oh, I, I could keep the manuscript of a book. You want to take a look at it? And it was Mastering the Art of French Cooking. And she said, well, the woman is coming to New York next week. You want to uh, cook for her? I said, yes. She said, it's a tall woman with a terrible voice, you see. <laughs> And I met Julia, and at that time I met James Beard the, and Craig Lebon, who started at the New York Times. So this were the trinity of cooking in America, Craig Lebon, the New York Times, James Beard and Julia, and I knew them less than six months after I was here to show you how small the food world was at that time. You know, it was another world. And could you have imagined when you met her that uh, however many years later you and Julia would be on public television? No, absolutely not. She didn't either because when I met her, she had never done a book before. She had never done television. She was never the food editor of a magazine newspaper, so she was not known at all, you know, at that point. So, and she just came back from France, I remember. Because when I met her, we spoke French more than English. You know, French was better than my English at the time. You're putting a collar on yours? I never yes. put color on my souffle, but... Well, then yours don't rise high enough. Oh, that's true. <laughs> you and Julia had such a great friendship, and, and I think you could really see it on the air. Yeah, we, we, we argue all the time, so... <laughs> <laughs> but we drank a lot of wine, too. Hi, Julia. <laughs> to you, okay. I think the viewers saw that you were genuine, that that was a genuine friendship, and I think, I think they loved you two you together. Know, you know why? I've done 13 series of 26 shows, and I say with KQED. Oh, that's great. And at the beginning, they say, editing is too expensive, you have to do it on time. So a 30-minute show, like 29 minutes, uh, I did three recipes, two, so I would have someone coming with a sign, say 15 minutes, seven minutes, three minutes, right. one minute wrap-up, which is pretty stressing, you know, in some ways. We started with Julia. Julia said, we're going to cook. When it's finished, we'll tell you. I think we had show which were 80 or 90 minutes. I don't know what happened to the B-roll, which I know. <laughs> that was one thing. The second thing also is that when you do a series on television, that I've done, you come at least with the manuscript of the book. So people in the back kitchen have an idea of what you're going to do. We had no recipe here with Julia. So we said, let's do stew tomorrow. Let's do whatever. So. Why did I put scallion in that stew? Because they happened to be on the table, they're there, we have no recipe. No recipe, a lot of wine, and no time limit. So <laughs> we had a good time. I think people can feel it. 
I think so. I think that appealed to a lot of people. And they loved you. You, you just had such great chemistry together, the, the two of you. Before teaming up with Julia Child while working at some of the finest restaurants in New York City, Jacques was an avid skier at Hunter Mountain in the Catskills. He also made a few trips north to Vermont as well. So you're coming up to visit us in Plattsburgh on October 1st. Have you been to Plattsburgh before the Adirondacks? I don't think. I mean, I used to ski in Stowe, Vermont, Burlington. And of course, I used to live upstate New York in the Catskill uh, in, at Hunter Mountain. You know, so I used to do a lot of skiing. So I'm looking forward to see old area of my life and friend that I have there. You know, So yes, I'm looking forward to it. And so many of our friends are north of the border in Montreal and Quebec, and oh, oui. you've been to Montreal before. And... Oh, oui, à Montréal. Mes amis à Montréal, j'aimerais pouvoir retourner vous voir un de ces jours, mais peut-être que je le ferai bientôt. En attendant, à votre santé. Merci. Good food up there, did a number of good restaurants. Oh, yes, of course, great food, good food, good, uh, good people. So, you know, I had a great time in Montreal and in Quebec. You know, I've been there many times. Everyone's Through his 40-plus years on PBS and his more than 30 cookbooks, Jacques taught many of us home cooks new ways of looking at recipes and cooking techniques. You really enjoy showing people, many who have never cooked before, never been in the kitchen, never picked up uh, a spatula, you show them how to make really delicious meals, quick and easy, on a budget, and, and is that really what you love doing. Yes, I mean, you know, I was in apprenticeship in 1949. So you can see, I'm going to be 87, so I've been in the kitchen uh, 75 years or more professionally, you know. So I have done, I've worked with uh, very important people. I've done uh, some of the greatest restaurants. So I've done very fancy food. And, uh, and it changed, you know, your metabolism changed. And now at my age, I realized maybe as a young chef, often you can to add and add and add more to the plate and this and that. Now that I get older, I can retrieve, retrieve from the plate to be left with something more essential, like the tomato just out of the garden, right temperature, a bit of coarse salt, dash of, I don't need embellishment anymore. So, you know, it changed. One is not better than the other. It, your life changed this way and uh, certainly, at the beginning of the pandemic there, my daughter Claudine told me, why don't you do some recipe of like three, four, five minutes to show people what they are in the refrigerator, in the pantry, in the freezer, what they can use. And we've done almost 300 of those. During the pandemic, you mentioned people were stuck at home. A lot of people were f really forced to go into the kitchen and, yes. and to cook for themselves. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I'm sure the pandemic caused a lot of divorce, but it also <laughs> caused a lot of people to get together more and cook together, and not only cook together, but eat together, sit down. And that's very important. In our family, this has always been a very, very important part of our family, the sharing of food, the making of food, and being together, you know, so. During the pandemic, Jacques did hundreds of short videos showing people who were suddenly stuck at home and having to find their way around the kitchen how to cook for themselves, offering quick and easy ways to prepare meals using limited ingredients. His daughter Claudine also teamed up with him to do cooking demonstrations on Facebook. Many viewers know Claudine well. She and her daughter, Jacques' granddaughter Shuri, have often joined him through the years on his cooking shows. I mean, when Claudine, my daughter, she's you know, 50 now, she was three years old or two years old, I hold her in my arm and I say, allez, remue, so she would mix for me, you know. Yeah. So she, quote, eat it because she made it uh, with that, you know. So right. same thing with my granddaughter. She came, she's taller than me. She's starting at BU actually next, uh, you know, next month. So, we uh, remember her as the little uh, yeah, yeah. granddaughter who joined you on your show. Exactly. So I put a stool next to me and I thought, okay, give me the salad. Do you think it's clean enough? What do you think? Test it. Give me a bowl. Go to the garden. I need some parsley. So I go there with the garden. I said, no, that's chive. Test it. That's parsley. Okay, test it. Go to the market with her. I said, give me some tomato. Make sure they are ripe or pear. Did you smell them? You think they are ripe? Came back. She helped me. And that's where the you know, a kind of canvas onto which to build a conversation. And of course, the more important part is the sharing of the food after you sit down and talk. And so many viewers grew up watching Claudine and then Shuri uh, and, and really enjoyed them because they 
asked so many of the questions we would ask. What, yes. what are you doing? How are you preparing it? And it's interesting you said that because the first series I did with Claudine, cooking with Claudine, well, of course, people tell her, <coughs> how is it to have a Jacques Pepin, famous chef from Chico? I don't know, I didn't never have another <laughs> one this morning. So, of course, we had great food at home, but she never knew what we were. She ate it fine, you know. So when we started doing the series, I didn't even tell her what we were doing. Uh, the, the, the menu. So, so we started, she said, wow, that's how you do it. And a lot of people wrote that uh, she's faking it. I'm sure she knows. No, she didn't know. She oh, knew how to eat it. She already, but she never knew how to do it. So it was, uh, so it was very natural this way. So she could ask questions and, uh, and so forth. So when she moved to BU many, many years ago, she's mid 50 now. So at Boston University and I started teaching there at that point a long, long time ago. So I remember I, I helped her renovate a little apartment there. I built up the kitchen, I do stuff too. And then she invited me for dinner one night I was there. So she went to the market, she said, my father loved chicken. I wear the chicken with roast potato, onion, he loved that, simple. I brought a bottle of wine. So she looked at chicken and there was other bigger chicken next to it, twice as expensive. So I'm going to take those more expensive. Those were of course hand <laughs> poultry. So. She cooked them, they were dry like hell, and overcooked <laughs> because <laughs> too old. So we ate, we drank the bottle of wine, and I didn't say anything, and finally she said, so, so, what do you think? And I, apparently I told her, do you want my opinion as the father or the chef? As <laughs> 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 the father, it was very good. <laughs> Claudine and her husband, Chef Roly Wieson, helped establish the Jacques Pepin Foundation that is now helping community organizations across the country. You mentioned uh, Claudine and, and Raleigh, her husband. They, with you, established uh, the Jacques Pepin Foundation. Foundation. Right. In just a few short years, you have raised millions yes. to help organizations that help people. Yes, we work with the community kitchen. And usually, not for young chefs, it's usually people in the mid-30, mid-40, mid-50s, mostly uh, people who come out of jail. Uh, former drug addict, uh, homeless people, uh, veteran even. So people who've had kind of a problem in life, you know, I mean, be disenfranchised and so forth. And, you know, within a couple of months, the guy may start as a dishwasher and the vegetable, but uh, if he works good, within three, four weeks, you move it up, you move it up, and you can, you can redo a life uh, and get some of your dignity back and some... Uh, Happiness, so it's good. We've done uh, very well with that, and I'm very, very proud of what uh, my son-in-law and Claudine did there. Yeah, yeah. Life skills, uh, culinary skills, and, and many of them find jobs yeah. in the food service oh, industry yes. in the culinary. Industry. Oh yes, absolutely. And we need people like this. Absolutely, no question. In the food world now, we need a lot of people which we don't have. So uh, yeah, it's nice. Uh, the kitchen is uh, is really a teamwork. You know, you work in a kitchen. Well, I mean, I did that all my life, and my motto also is that everyone is the same in the eye of the stove. So, you know, whoever you are, black, white, this, that too, it, it's really a, a teamwork, you know, in the kitchen, and you, you get involved in that, and you can be very happy. I mean, of course, you have to do it for the right reason, and the right reason is that you like to, to cook and please people, so, but it's a nice life. I mean, I've done it for close to 80 years, so. Jacques is finishing work now on his 32nd cookbook. This one, all about one of his favorite foods, chicken. Jacques Pepin, Art of the Chicken, a master chef's painting, stories, and recipes of the humble bird. You're such a prolific author, uh, 31, 32 books. Uh, the 32nd is going to be coming out in September. Right. And uh, tell us about that, your latest book. It's called The Art of Chicken. It's going to be published in September there. Out of chicken, I realized that in those illustrations I was doing a lot of chicken. So I decided I said, well, I want to do a book of my children, of my chicken illustration. And uh, the, the, my, my editor, you know, publisher said, yeah, great, terrific, but we want recipe. I said, I don't want recipe. I've done <laughs> hundreds of books. So I actually, we have over a hundred of panning of chicken and with story, story of chicken, story of eggs or chicken. I have a book called The Apprentice, which is a story of my life. Yes. Uh, so it's the same idea. I will talk to you about what I served to the president in France, up to uh, 
a truck stop somewhere in South Africa. And it also includes your artwork, some of your beautiful paintings well, and drawings. That's it. that's it. We have a hundred paintings of chicken in there. So, so that's good. And your kitchen here is decorated with some of your, your beautiful artwork. Yes, well. yeah, we do that. I used to do some mosaic like that. I work with my hand. My father was a cabinet maker by trade. And, uh, but of course, when I was a kid, uh, 13 years old, I left to go into apprenticeship. My mother had a restaurant and uh, my father was a cabinet maker. At that time, of course, we didn't have the telephone, we didn't have television, of course, we didn't have a radio, it didn't really exist, really. So, uh, no magazine or stuff. So life was probably much simpler and easier than now. So either I had blinders, either I'm a cook or a cabinet maker, you know, so that's it. So I went into cooking. It was an easy choice, I guess. Jacques Lepin, thank you so much for taking the well, time to you. talk with us. We are so looking forward to having you come and join well, us I, in October. I'll bring to Pittsburgh and all my friends there, and I'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. And happy cooking. You can learn more about joining us and meeting Jacques Pepin in person here on the historic U.S. Oval on Saturday, October 1st at 5 p.m. Go to mountainlake.org gala for more information.